If you've ever had a case of deja vu, you know just how strange it can feel that something has happened before. But what if it goes beyond that? What if that happens all the time? What if it starts to feel like your entire life has been lived in the past, not just once, but many times? Here are 10 mysterious cases of people who reincarnated. Number 10 is the boy who lived before. Though Cameron Macaulay lived with his mother and his older brother in Glasgow, Scotland, he repeatedly told his mother that he wanted his Bera appearance. As it turns out, there's an island off the Scottish mainland called Bera, 354 kilometers away from Glasgow. Cameron constantly spoke of his old home there, and this fact caused him great emotional distress. Though Cameron has never been to the island, he gave detailed descriptions of a house there where he said his father Shane Robertson lived. It was near there that Cameron remembered being killed by a car in his previous life. Psychologists treating Cameron's distress were able to find the house that he described. Though they could not find a man called Shane living there, the house was owned by a family with the same second name of Robertson. Number 9 is an ancient resident. James Arthur Flowerdew was an English captain who lived from 1906 until 2002. He lived an amazing life, but he claimed that it wasn't his only one. James had been haunted by bizarre visions. These visions were of a strange stone city carved into a cliff like something out of a Lovecraftian nightmare. As an adult, he watched a BBC documentary about the ancient city of Petra in Jordan and realized that it was the city from his visions. After traveling to the city, James was asked by archaeologists to describe his memories. Not only did he identify where he had been murdered in his past life, but he also explained what several recently found relics were used for, and he had a knowledge of the city which even archaeologists themselves had to admit eclipsed their own. Number 8 are Repressed Memories the field of hypnotic regression is often used controversially to reveal a person's traumatic experiences. These experiences have been pushed so deep that the individual has no memory of the time. During the 1950s, hypnotists began to uncover bizarre memories which predated their patients' births. In one famous instance, a woman named Ruth Simmons from Colorado was regressed so far back that she began to speak in a heavy Irish accent. She claimed that she lived in Ireland in the 19th century. Some of the details she gave were verified after the fact, such as naming two people in her village who she used to buy food from. When researchers looked at the census for the village during the 19th century, they found two people with the names that Ruth had given, both listed their occupations as green grocers. Number seven is The Runaway. During the 1930s, one of the most well-documented cases of alleged reincarnation occurred. It revolved around a young girl named Shanti Devi in Delhi, India. She claimed from as young as four years of age that her true home was 145 kilometers away in a place called Mathura. Shanti believed her husband from her previous life still lived there and tried to run away from her biological family in an attempt to reach her old home. Shanti used words from the dialect found in the Mathura region, words she could not have known otherwise. When a local headmaster found the man she claimed to be her old husband, Shanti recognized him immediately, despite him introducing himself as someone else. Though she remained with her biological family, Shanti maintained her claims of reincarnation until she died in 1987. Number six is a phoenix from the flames. 
Many children who claim to be reincarnated can vividly describe the moment of their previous death. This information is then used to verify their claim. In the case of two-year-old Luke Ruhlman, it was his descriptions of his death which led to his mother to uncover the truth. At just two years of age, Luke began naming some of his toys Pam. When his mother asked who Pam was, he answered saying, I used to be Pam, but I died and went to heaven and saw God, and eventually God pushed me back down. When I woke up, I was a baby and you named me Luke. He then went on to describe how he used to be a woman and had died after jumping out of a window during a fire in Chicago. Later research revealed that just before Luke was born, a woman named Pam Robinson died in those exact same circumstances. Number five is the fire chief. Retired assistant fire chief Jeffrey Keane's account of reincarnation is very compelling. In 1991, Keane was nearby a field in Sharpsburg, Maryland, when he felt drawn to the environment around him. As he walked through the field, he was overcome with emotion and then experienced symptoms of a heart attack. Repressed memories soon came to him after seeing an article on General John B. Gordon, who fought in the field during the Civil War. It became clear to researchers that Keene actually was the general in a previous life. Keene's medical records showed that he experienced pain in his body at the same age that the general had been wounded in those exact same areas. It was as if the memory of those events were forever etched into the body of Keene as a testimony to General Gordon's service. Number four is Gone with the Wind. When a Midwestern child named Lee remembered his previous life at just two years old, his recollections stunned his family. He was adamant that he had another mother living in another house. Although Lee was born on June 21st, he was adamant that he was born on the 26th instead. He then argued that his middle name was Ko and that he even had a daughter named Jennifer. The last pieces of information he could remember were that he had been 48 when he died and that he had been a screenwriter by profession. Lee's parents asked him what he had written and proudly identified Gone with the Wind as one of his works. Thinking this was all fantasy, Lee's parents were shocked when they discovered that a man named Sidney Coe Howard had indeed written the film and had a daughter named Jennifer and died at the age of 48. Number three is the Japanese soldier. The descriptions of a Burmese girl named Ma Tin Aung Mayo's previous life are some of the most vivid on record. Aung Mayo claimed that she was the reincarnation of a Japanese soldier, one her mother had known in real life. During her pregnancy, Aung Mayo's mother had vivid dreams of a Japanese soldier she'd met in Burma, as if his ghost was following her wherever she went. Aung Mayo was soon born in 1953 and had a strange birthmark Mark near her groin. As she grew, she exhibited a tremendous fear of airplanes. Eventually, she told her mother that she had been the Japanese soldier her mother previously knew, and that he had been killed by an Allied fighter pilot while running for cover on the ground. A bullet had fatally pierced him exactly where Miles' birthmark now was. Number two is the anonymous killer. It's not just newspapers and academic papers which uncover reincarnation claims. The internet has given an anonymous voice to those who have been afraid to speak out about their experiences. In one such case, Reddit user Drabby Normal Blues posted their chilling account. Their memories were of being a serial killer throughout the 1940s and 50s and burying over 50 bodies somewhere near a remote farmhouse. Since then, the Redditor has a number of strange coincidences in their life. This includes when meeting and marrying their partner. They both felt that they had already married each other in a previous life. In a darker twist, the Redditor claimed that they often had thoughts about killing people, but never wanted to act on them, as if the broken psyche of their previous serial killer life still had influence from the great beyond. And number one is he solved his own murder. 
In 2015, a three-year-old boy from Golan Heights in the Middle East discussed a red birthmark on his head with anyone who would listen. He claimed that he had previously been another boy who had gone missing four years previous and then been murdered. What's more is that he knew who his killer was. The boy had been able to show where he had previously lived, as well as his name and other details not widely known. While walking through his previous village, the boy walked up to a man and publicly accused him of being his murderer. The man and panicked and eventually confessed after the boy showed where his body had been buried. Pointing to his own head where the red birthmark lay, he told everyone this is where he hit me with the axe. The victim's body was found and had a wound in the exact same place.